Late last year, signs began emerging that Turkey and Syria were ready to put more than a decade of hostility behind them. And that momentum continued this week as Iran's Foreign Minister Hussein Amir Abdullahian visited Ankara, fresh from a trip to Damascus. Following in the footsteps of Russia, which hosted both Syrian and Turkish defense ministers in Moscow last month, Iran is pushing for the two neighbors to normalize ties. Turkey's Foreign Minister Mevlut Cavusoglu hailed Iran's diplomatic efforts, saying its mediating role is very important. Cavusoglu also hinted that a much-awaited meeting with his Syrian counterpart could take place as early as next month. Relations between Turkey and Syria broke down in 2011, following the start of the Syrian war. Ankara has supported the opposition, while Russia and Iran have been the biggest backers of Damascus. And now for more on this, I'm joined by Ivan Starodupsev. He is a Russia-Turkey analyst based in Ankara. And Ahmed Kesar, he is an associate professor at Ankara Hasan Kalyonji University. Gentlemen, welcome to Straight Talk. It's good to have you on the program. So, Ahmed, what's the significance of Iran's foreign minister's visit to Turkey? What could you tell us about its timing? Uh, it's uh, actually a very critical timing, uh, just uh, at the point that the Russia is uh, trying to conduct a mediation between uh, uh, reorganizing and uh, to improve the relations between Turkish side and Syria. So we see the Iran's visit as well. Uh, of course, uh, there will be some issues n related to natural gas, but I think most of the issues will be focused on the Syrian case uh, mm -hmm. and maybe the, uh, about the upcoming possible uh, operation of uh, Turkey uh, towards Syria uh, in its negotiations, I think. So, Ivan, what's your take on that? I mean, is this an indication of stepped-up efforts to normalize relations between Turkey and Syria? Exactly, exactly. Russia, as Mr. Ahmed said, tries to mediate between official Damascus and Ankara. But uh, let us not to forget that uh, there is Astana process and Iran is a part of the game. So it is a kind of indicator that uh, although we didn't hear anything about uh, participation of Iran in the meeting uh, forthcoming, uh, or expected, let me say. So Iran is a member of the Astana process and part of this game. So mm -hmm. this is a very strong indicator of that. So it's important that this visit comes after Turkey's Syrian and Russian defense ministers and intelligence officials meeting in Moscow last month. Is a tripartite meeting between the four ministers of the three countries, Ahmed, uh, imminent now? Uh, I think at least we can say it's close to be upcoming uh, just after uh, foreign minister's visit to U.S. But uh, we know uh, that U.S. side has oppositions regarding that issue as well. Mm -hmm. So uh, just Chaushoglu visited the counterpart in the United States, maybe uh, changing uh, their uh, decision about this issue. We don't know yet. There is not any explanation regarding this one. Uh, but it came just after this one, and U.S. just, uh, they have already declared their opposition regarding the fixing the relations between Turkey and Syrian regime, because they said that there is no change at the position of Syrian regime yet. Mm -hmm. So, Ivan, why was Iran not included, I mean, in a prospective meeting, of course, between the uh, presidents of Turkey and Syria? Is an alternative format being formed to the Astana process? I don't think that it is an alternative process uh, to, to Astana. Uh, why Iran was not included? Uh, actually, uh, the main speakers at this meeting are Syria and Turkey. Russia is just mediating here. Mm -hmm. So Russia as mediator participate in this meeting. So it is not Astana format. But what I do expect, personally, me, that after this meeting, if it happens, of course, naturally, uh, somehow official Damascus will be integrated in Astana process, so it will not be triangle already, it will be a quartet of four countries. So, Ahmed, is Iran stepping in, filling the void created uh, by Russia's distraction over the Ukraine conflict, or is it getting more involved into this process in order to break the United Arab Emirates' rising influence uh, in the normalization process of the region? A very good question, actually. We know that uh, for a while, uh, we didn't hear too much from Iran's side, uh, which shows uh, or it reflects their uh, position uh, in the region. Uh, 
Uh, so uh, we can, uh, or at least the perceptions of the public opinions in the region may see that the Iran's role is decreasing. So I think Iran is trying to fix and fulfill this gap again uh, in the region especially, and they still want to show that they are still in their position and in the region effective. Also, we have seen that uh, we have some voice coming from China as well, mm -hmm. because uh, they gave some uh, comments uh, especially which is blaming on U.S. side uh, about uh, oil smuggling. They said that uh, one day 60 tankers before 57 tankers. So they indicating insistingly uh, by showing some evidence that U.S. side is now involved in uh, illegal oil smuggling progress also in the region. So China is also try, uh, trying to become a main player in the region as well. Uh, they start to uh, enter into the game yes. as well, like Iran. Yeah, I want to talk uh, talk about China's role in a minute. But if we get back to the United Arab Emirates, uh, Ivan, what kind of a role does the country play in normalizing relations? And is there a risk of Iran being left out in the cold as the United Arab Emirates mediates for an end to tensions? I think uh, United Arab Emirates in this meeting tried to show that uh, they are participated in the name of Gulf. And it is an indicator that Gulf countries are ready to normalize fully the relations with official Damascus. Also, it is an indicator that regional countries are coming together to resolve regional issues. But of course, it is not an indicator that uh, there will be a gap and uh, that the uh, position of Iran is weakening in uh, Syria. Iran actually uh, stepped, uh, how to say, uh, is on the ground in Syria quite strongly. So no, uh, no way, I think, uh, from this point of view. So, um, Ahmed, are Russia and Iran on the same page when it comes to thaw in relations between Turkey and Syria? And what's at stake for both capitals? Uh, maybe not exactly, but at at least uh, they are uh, close to each other, we can say. Uh, mm -hmm. Both uh, support uh, Syrian regime in the region because Syrian regime is also a guarantee for the existence of Russian bases uh, in the Mediterranean. Uh, so uh, Russia and regime uh, has very good relations because the existence of regime is uh, strongly connected to the support uh, provided by Russia in the region. Yes. Uh, Iran has also a strong influence on the regime uh, because uh, they are the, let's say, most uh, stressing power of the Shia crescent uh, in the region. So they have a sectarian connection with the regime in this uh, mm -hmm. area. Uh, and the opposition side is mostly represented by the uh, uh, Sunni uh, Muslim groups. So, uh, and also, uh, we know that Iran is supporting Russia uh, in the uh, Russian war uh, to Ukraine by uh, providing some UAVs and uh, other uh, military equipment as well. Yes. So we can say uh, Iran and Russia is uh, more or less uh, at the same site in Syrian uh, condition as well. So Ivan Ahmed earlier mentioned the U.S.'s opposition to a possible normalization uh, of ties between Turkey and Syria and, of course, uh, President Assad. How, what would normalized ties between the two countries would mean for the presence of the PKK-YPG holdup in northern Syria? Uh, let me let me make a reference to the recent visit of Minister of Foreign Affairs of Turkey, Mr. Mevlut Cavusoglu, to Washington. I consider it is like a last change, uh, chance which uh, Turkey gave to the United States to reconsider its position towards PKK and YPG. Uh, in, in spite of the joint declaration published uh, by by the sides, there is no any sign that the United States changed their position. So, by this visit by the Iranian Minister of Foreign Affairs and by further steps, Turkey very much clearly indicates that we will go on with this process, which process which was started just just recently. So it looks like it looks like sites will go quite quite quickly, quite forward uh, to this direction. What will it mean to the United States, to the to and it, the, their presence to Syria? They will be more isolated over there. Uh, because it will not be just uh, Iran and Russia who, who just uh, come uh, 
towards them. There will be also Turkey acting together and in co coordination with Russia and with Iran. Uh, definitely, it will be hard times for them from now on. Yeah. So, Ahmed, what do you think? Is this going to be an easy process? What are the main challenges ahead? Uh, I think uh, there is a chaotic uh, environment in the region, so it's not very, very easy to fix everything, even though uh, Turkey is for a while trying to fix relations with all the regional countries. We see that in every issue, uh, there is another problem. So it should be evaluated as case by case. Uh, yes, the uh, problems can be uh, reached to uh, solutions, but it is not very easy, especially uh, in the cases like Syria, because opposition is at one side, Syrian regime is on the other side, global powers on every different sectors. Mm -hmm. uh, the destruction of the balance uh, in the US policies related to uh, Turkey and Greece is uh, on the other side. So the upcoming agenda still will be busy with those kind of issues. Yes, it can be solved, I think, case by case, not all the problems at the same time. So, Ivan, as a distant but an important actor, I mean, where does China stand amid this changing uh, political landscape? How could China benefit from a normalized ties between the two neighbors? Uh, definitely, uh, the normalization in uh, Syria and more widely in the Middle East. Of course, it is in favor of China, who elaborates its project Silk, New Silk Way. So this is a part of Middle Corridor. So normalization in Syria means that uh, the corridor will be safer and work in a full, in a full scale. So, of course, uh, they will uh, try to contribute to this process also. So, Çavuşoğlu said uh, both Iran and Turkey strongly support Syria's territorial integrity and political unity. But now the time has come for both countries, including, of course, Turkey, to take concrete steps. Ahmed, what did Çavuşoğlu try to mean by taking concrete steps? Are there any preconditions to start this process? I think uh, this may be a signal for another military operation in the region uh, against the terrorist organizations. Uh, and first, uh, I think uh, ensuring the security in the regions and then ensuring the security of the all groups in the region uh, and normalization and then handing over all the territories maybe uh, later on uh, to the Syrian regime as well. Of course, this will come uh, after multilateral uh, agreements uh, and the negotiations will not be so easy, but solution is possible, I think. Uh, China, uh, it seems that China will be, uh, at least, uh, they will try to be a main actor in the region, uh, at least uh, to provide a security for uh, upcoming projects like uh, Belt and Road projects and etc., et because they are also strongly uh, dependent uh, on the resources coming from the Gulf region and the African region. So security in the Middle East uh, also uh, provide uh, security for China for the future as well. All right, gentlemen, unfortunately, we'll have to leave it here. Thank you very much for joining me on Straight Talk.